praise you, praise you, praise you. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house today, Lord, and we ask for your direction in everything that we do here this morning. Give us the wisdom to follow the Holy Spirit. Give us the courage to follow the Holy Spirit. And Father, we pray that as the word comes forth and as the praise comes forth, that you'll be pleased with everything that takes place here today. Thank you, Lord, for that direction. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Good morning. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord and all those that are at home watching the live stream. It's good to have you this morning. We do have a few announcements to make today. The last few weeks we haven't had any, but the big announcement is next Sunday morning we will open up. We're going to, for the first few weeks or so, we're going to follow uh, the recommendations that they have given us on uh, guidelines for social distancing. We will have two services, but they will be both in the morning, and we're going to have two sets of people. If your name, last name, begins with A through M, we're going to ask you to come to the 9 o'clock service. If your name is N through Z, we're going to ask you to come to the 11 o'clock service. We will be have uh, ushers that will be helping you. Families can sit together. Uh, we will have six feet, approximately six feet of distance between everybody else. Uh, one family and the next family will have six feet apart. If it's a one person or two people, they will be six feet from the others around them. We have uh, a lot of chairs in here, and we feel like with the two services, we can handle everybody that wants to come. I hope we can. <clears throat> I hope we have to put seats out in the lobby out there. I hope that's what happens. But I think <clears throat> after a few weeks, maybe things will start to change. And um, we'll just get back to the new normal, whatever that's going to be. But the good thing is, next week, we will have people back in here. We've got just a very few in here this morning, and we're not officially open yet. That's a good thing. Uh, I've had several phone calls and uh, wanting to get back in church. That's a good thing. We need to be in the house of the Lord. And <clears throat> this is a necessity. Uh, it's... You know, essential is the word they use. We believe it's definitely an essential thing to praise and worship the Lord and for his people to get together. Um, Adam taught Wednesday night, and if you heard that Wednesday night teaching, you know that that's not just something we're thinking. That's the word of God. So we need to be there, and we will be. Now, Wednesday night, let me say this. Wednesday night, we will be open. I do not know yet all the arrangements on the youth and the arrangements for the little ones. We will not have a nursery next Sunday morning. We've got to do some thinking and, and make some arrangements there to where we can handle that situation. We will not have a nursery next Sunday morning. When will the nursery open back up? I'm not sure, but we'll keep you informed on that. Uh, two- and three-year-olds, I'm not sure. We have had uh, one meeting this week to decide to go ahead and open up but we do not have all the things in order. The children's church will pr probably be operative. We'll put that out. It's at least first through sixth grade. I'm not sure about the others, but we'll put that information out as the week goes on. And Wednesday night, we will live stream Wednesday night, and we'll make those announcements again with a little more information for you. But praise God, we will be back open with our congregation coming back in here next Sunday morning. We're going to have a good time of praise and worship this morning. We want to have a good time as the word comes forth. So let's just all get together and enjoy being in the house of the Lord, or if you're at home, join right in there and enjoy worshiping at home. Uh, is there any other announcements this morning? Stephen, you're up in the crow's nest. Do you have anything on the youth yet? Okay. Well, we'll go from there. Lisa, are you ready? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. All right. I do want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And uh, this morning, Maddie has a song that she's going to sing for a special called King of Kings. In the darkness, we were waiting. 
without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our Savior died Praise the say this now. I was going to say this when I got back up. The Holy Spirit moved me which is a good sign because maybe something is fixing to happen. Praise the Lord. It is Mother's Day and um, I was going to say a little bit about that when I got back up but 
when we get into praise and worship, we may be into a place where I can't say this. Normally we have all the mothers recognized and we give them something and we're just not able to do that. As a matter of fact, um, the first day that I was the pastor of Wellington First Baptist Church was on Mother's Day 16 years ago. And it's that's kind of special to us in that way too. But thank God for all the mothers. And um, and I want to mention, you know, next, again, next week, if, if it's impossible for you to make the service that your name comes in, uh, please don't choose one another try to stay within what your name is but if you can't be at a nine o'clock service and you're supposed to be and you can come at the 11 do that don't stay out one or the other because of that and if you want to wear a mask we would encourage that uh, we have people that will be wearing have mask on you do that if you feel safer that way and it does help keep anything from spread so I want to make those two announcements I was going to make those later but that's a good sign. I believe the Lord's fixing to move this morning. So let's just continue on right now with where we are. All right. All those who are here, if you want to stand, what an awesome day to be here. What an awesome day to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I wondered so aimless, I'm to sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, just like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claim for my own Just like the blind man that got me back his side Praise the Lord, I saw the light, oh I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light Straight, straight is a gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong and for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. Hey, let's come back to that last verse. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I was a fool to wander astray. Straight is a gate and narrow the way. Now I have traded the wrong and for the yes. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad He changed me. See, I am a new creation in Christ. Yes, I am. The old has gone, there's new life. I live by faith, not by sight. Yes, a new name. There is a new name written. And it's mine, yes it's mine I met the author of my story And it's mine, yes it's mine Sin had left me blind Jesus opened my eyes I can see the light I'm 
so glad he changed me now i'm walking free i got the victory it's all over me i'm so glad he changed me see i am a new creation in christ yes i am the old is gone there's new life i live by faith not by sight there is a new name written down in glory and it's mine yes Yes, it's mine i met the author of my story and it's mine yes it's mine there is a new name written down in glory and it's mine yes it's mine i met the author of my story and he's mine yes he's mine i am who i am because the i am tells me who i am i am who i am because the i am tells me who i am i am who i am because the i am tells me who i am i am who i am because the i am tells me who i am there is a new name written down in glory and it's mine, yes, it's mine. I met the author of my story, and it's mine, yes, it's mine. There is a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, yes, it's mine. I met the author of my story, and it's mine, yes, it's mine. He's mine, yes, He's mine. Father, we just praise you today for the opportunity to worship you, Father. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you here in the sanctuary, Father God, and through the live stream. I thank you, Lord, that when the enemy tried to shut down church, that, Lord, you, you opened up an avenue through, through the Internet that would allow us to continue to worship and to praise you. And, Lord, today as we worship, as we glorify you, as we, we go through this time of praise, that, Father God, you would prepare our hearts for the word that we're going to receive today. That, Lord, you would just get us ready to take it in, Father God, and to allow it to change us the way we need to be changed and to do the things that we need to do. Because today's all about lifting you up and glorifying you and walking out of here and changing, Father God, just where we're at today through the power of the word and through the power of worship. Lord, we glorify you for it all today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. takes a little faith 
God when you choose to leave mountains unmovable. Oh, give me the strength to be able to sing. It is well with my soul. I know you're able and I know you can. Save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would all go away if you just say the word. But even if you don't,
to still be moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. And God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. Still be raised. Giants are still being saved. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that. Wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do.
sing one of those chain breaking songs I don't know whatever you
Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. <clears throat> Glory. I told Adam this morning, I said, I, he, he came in and asked me, he said, you know where you're going this morning? I said, well, I, I think it's, it's kind of a, a, a odd Mother's Day sermon. He said, I believe I've heard that before. <laughs> Yeah, he has. It's uh, <clears throat> I pray and pray about these things, and uh, the way the Lord brings some of them together is just amazing, miracle. And we wanna, we do wanna honor the mothers, but we wanna worship Jesus, and we're gonna do both right now as we've been doing. We're gonna go first of all to the book of Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter one. Second Timothy, chapter one. <clears throat> I'm going to read, beginning with verse two. To Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelled first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. That strong, strong faith that Timothy had received, and he said that I, Paul is right in this, he said that I saw first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. You see, that grandmother, in raising Eunice, had instilled in her that belief in Jesus, that faith, that strong desire. And Eunice, with the help of her mother Lois, had instilled in Timothy that strong faith, that desire. Scripture says, train up a child in the way he should go, when he's old, he'll not depart from that. Training up a child is a lot of debate about it. But Scripture has directions that tell us how to go about that. And you've got to bring all those Scriptures together, and you've got to swallow a lot of pride, pick up a lot of courage, and do what's right in the eyes of God. Mothers, being with their children, most of them so much are so important in what's instilled in that child. You see in so many the same 
things in the child that you see in a parent. I want to go to John chapter 10. And this is where I thought, Lord, are we going, is this a Mother's Day? And he began to show me a little bit. And I'm going to read a few verses in chapter 10 of John, the book of John, beginning with verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. And one thing that is so important for mothers to teach a child is to learn to know the voice of the Lord. Learn to know the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And as we see here, there is only one way. Do not believe the things that you hear on TV. Do not believe the things that you see printed. Do not believe that there are many ways to heaven. Because many ways to heaven lead one way to hell. There is only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> that is instilled in that child. They do have to make the decision for themselves, but that motherly love and that motherly influence and even that motherly discipline at times is a big, big part of that. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. In verse 10, he said, The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Mothers, fathers too, but it is Mother's Day. Mothers, you are badly deceived if you think the devil is going to let your child go on. You're badly deceived if you think the devil is not going to give your children a hard time when he gets an opportunity to. And you're badly deceived if you think you're going to be able to be the one that deals with it. That child is going to have to deal with it. That child is going to have to know how to deal with it. Satan is going to come. He's going to come to try to kill, steal, and destroy that child. It happens to everybody. Nobody is exempt. He's coming. The mother still is so important in that because she will win more battles on her knees in prayer than ever by trying to argue a situation. I want to look at what 2 Corinthians says here for a second. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Now, whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You see, one thing that really needs to be instilled is the Word of God teaching how to know how Satan works. When a mother instills in a child the operation of the powers of darkness, 
how to seek Jesus, how to go about following the Lord in these situations, knowing the devices that Satan will throw up. There is so many ways, and it, you know, it blows my mind how he catches Christian mothers off guard so many times by a situation that all of a sudden they're fighting it in the flesh. They're fighting it in the flesh. You are not going to win the battle in the flesh. Neither will your child win the battle in the flesh. And if you teach them to fight the battle in the flesh, you're teaching them how to lose the battle. And it will happen. It does happen. We're, we live in a fleshly body. We're weak at times. We get our strength through the power of the Holy Spirit. First Peter. In First Peter chapter 5. I want to read about three verses there, beginning with verse 6. First Peter chapter 5, beginning with verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. He says, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. There is nothing you can do as a mother to go out there and say, well, I'm going to do this and the devil will let my child alone. Your child is going to have to learn to fight that battle. It's more, way more important to teach the child how to fight the battle than it is for you to fight the battle for them. Now, I, un, unfortunately or fortunately, whatever you want to say, either side, I've been in education for 40 something years I have seen all kind of situations I have seen two roads two ditches excuse me two ditches and a middle of the road very few there are some but very few take the middle of the road one ditch unfortunately are those mothers that really just don't care they don't care they don't put enough effort into, into raising the child. They let the child do what they want to. Uh, they just do not care enough. But that's not so much the ditch that we're talking about. The other ditch is the one that way goes overboard. They want to hover over that child. Even when they begin to grow up, they hover over that child. That child the Lord is dealing and trying to teach things but the parent will not let them teach it. The mother will not let them teach it. You know, and in the first couple of years that I was at Jacksonville Christian Academy, I got really upset one day because of some things that happened within the school because I'm thinking I'm principaling a Christian school. Why would this happen? What in the world am I doing wrong here? What's... I am trying to live like the Lord wants me to live. I'm trying to live for Him. I'm trying to follow. Why? He let me wall around in that for a while, and he said, that's enough. Here's the answer. I allow some of these things to happen so I can teach through you the things that I won't talk in them for things that they're going to be confronted with later on in life. Life is not going to be a piece of cake. Neither are they going to go through life without making mistakes. And I said, duh. Right in front of me. The very thing I should have known. Mothers need to learn and need to get a grasp on the fact that the Lord is going to grow your child if you're in a Christian environment. Things are not going to go perfect. Things are not going to be just like you want them all the time. And you're going to have to give that child some space. 
I have seen, I, I can tell you situation after situation. Some are good, some are not. I go way back. Uh, and I remember many, many years ago, this mother came in and said, this has happened, she said, this, 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 this. You weren't even there. How can you tell me? This, this, and this, and this. The child couldn't even say anything. This child, would, she would not lie to me. She would not lie to me. She probably lied more than anybody in the school. But she was convinced she didn't lie. She wouldn't do this. She wouldn't. It blew my mind. Why not let the Lord teach here what's trying to be taught? Back when I was in the public school system, I remember a situation where a young man, he talked to me a good bit. He was on up about the 11th grade, 11th, 12th grade. And I, he got into, a, got into a trouble, and his, his mother came in, and, and he was, for some reason, I was called into witness there within, in the principal's office, and he was saying things that I knew was an absolute lie. And he was saying that, but I didn't open my mouth. I was a witness. So the mother believed that. She had a fit about it. The principal did what he had to do. I was a teacher at that time. And later on in the day, this young man, I love him to this day. Matter of fact, I think he's preaching. He come to my office down there, and uh, he had a big old grin on his face, and he sat down. I looked at him. I said, your mother believed every word you said. And he laughed. And he said, didn't your mother believe you? He had made a fool out of her in the office. The point being, mothers, your children do not tell the truth all the time. No matter how much you want to believe that, they don't. And in these things, you've got to start letting them somewhere take care of some of their own Problems, deal with things yourself. I raised four daughters. It, sometimes it's a hard thing to do. Sometimes there was things said that, in my view, and in Frankie's, but in my view, they had been done terribly wrong. Now I was probably very prejudiced, but we fortunately stayed out of it and let them handle their own problems. Let them handle the situation between them and another student. I have situations sometimes where the mother comes in and there's a situation and there, have, there has been no contact with the teacher. The student hadn't done anything. Let me give you a little example of something that happened here in the, this past year that I thought was good. As a matter of fact, the Lord used that to, for, to bring some of this to me today. It was a young man in the seventh grade, made straight A's. He slipped up a little bit. He didn't get some things right, didn't get all of his work in on this thing, and it was hurting his grade. He, he went to the teacher, and he said, can I talk to you? She said, yes. He said, this is what happened, and this is what I did. And I'd just come to you asking if there's any way possible, you would let me do some things that I could make that up. Here's her response. Since you came in here like a young man and didn't have your mother called up here to take care of this for you, you can make it up. I thought, bingo! We just made progress right here. He learned something. He learned something. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's hard for mothers to do that. I had one, and I lived with one. And the one I live with, I learned some things about how mothers felt and how hard it was sometimes. But you've got to remember that the God that we're serving is way bigger than we are. The God that we're serving knows way more than we do. The God that we're serving 
teaches us as we grow older. He's still working on me, and I'm 65 years old. He's still teaching me day by day, growing me to learn to be more and more like Him. When you have a child that is coming along and the Lord is working on him, so many times I see the mother get in the Lord's way. Stop it. we got a lot of young mothers. we got a lot of young mothers. And in, in case you didn't know, Katie is with child. And uh, if you see her run off of here one day, and take, she's not mad at me, she's sick. We've got a, a lot of young mothers. Uh, Harley's got several young uns. I can't even keep up. How many you got now? Three. Yeah, I, I knew that. I'm just kidding. But, um, but there's so many things that, is, that comes back to a mother for them to make the right decision that goes against the way you feel in the flesh. It goes against. You know it. You naturally want to go jump and defend that child. And when you go and defend that child, you've messed up. Now, I'm not saying you just turn a child loose. I'm not saying that you don't stand up for them. I think most of the people here, and I hope most of the people listening in know, I'm not talking about you don't stand up for your child. You do. But you don't fight their battles. Let them fight their battles. You be there to support them. In there's so many, so many things written nowadays that say different things. And I, I know this brought me back to, a, to 2 Timothy. And this is something that we've talked about from time to time. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires... Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So go back to what the Bible says about raising a child. Go back to what the Bible teaches us about living a Christian life. You know, as my kids grew up, and they're all grown now, i got grandkids coming along, but I can remember... Some of the things that they dealt with growing up and some of the, the children that, that they might have had a conflict with and I never got involved, I'm going to tell you, as sure as I'm standing here today, every one of those kids, there wasn't many, many times, but there were a few, every one of those kids that they had a conflict with, I love them. I love that child. I love them and would do anything for them in the world. You don't take those kind of things to the flesh and take them personally. He's called us to love each other. He's called us to look over and beyond, forgive and forget, and love people that hurt us. That's one of the hardest things to instill for a mother because you are feeling the hurt of the child. You are feeling the hurt and pain that the child is feeling. But you've got to remember that if we do it God's way, it's an absolute victory. And we cannot live that child's life for them. You know and I know there's so many times nowadays, so many opportunities. You see so many parents living their child, living their life through the child at the baseball field or at the uh, little league football or whatever. You can't live that child's life for them. You teach them the things of God. You teach them the ways of God. You teach them that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He came here that we might have life, and we might have it more abundantly. He is on our side, and He's with us. He's there, and He's never going to leave us nor forsake us. He's what we need to get through this life. I'm not going to be there all the time. Frankie's not going to be there all the time. We are going to leave this earth one of these days and our daughters and grandchildren 
and son-in-laws are going to be here and we will be gone. We will not be there to fight the battle for them. Then if we have fought all their battles and we're gone, all of a sudden here they are and they don't know. The world eats them up. But if I do it the way the Lord tells me to do it, and I teach them, seek Jesus. Do it the Lord's way. Mothers, you win the battle on your knees. My battle is not against flesh and blood. That's scripture. My battle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the powers of darkness. I win that battle on my knees by lifting up my request to the Lord. We have a loving, loving God. There is nothing like a mother. And if you have your mother, if you still have your mother today, you need to thank God. Mine's still alive. I wish she was here today. My mother is still going strong at 83. Thank God. That's a blessing. Uh, make sure, if your mother's still alive, that you let them know how much you love them. You know, it's a thing that we, we lost Frankie's mother just a few years ago. Um, lost my dad. You know, while you've got them here, you better be sure to let them know how much you care about them because they will not be here forever. And it's kind of like this thing here. All of a sudden, the world changes. All of a sudden, your life changes. Make sure that you let your mother know how much you love them. There's nobody other than Jesus Christ that will love you more than your mother. I want you to think about the things that have been said today because this is this was kind of one of those sermons when I saw it come. What he was where he was leading me over there. I said, "This I don't think this is Mother's Day," but the Lord began to put things together, and it's kind of like some of the things I've preached on Father's Day in the past. Usually, I, the mothers it's it's very easy on the mothers. But this is pretty strong. But it's the truth. It's the truth. Because everyone that lives in a fleshly body and every mother is tempted to do the things I've talked about today. And probably have done it. Probably have done it. But that doesn't mean that we can't seek the will and way of God and try to do the things that He teaches us. Again, we want to wish all the mothers a great great day today and I thank God that my mother will be having a meal with us and our children will be there thank the Lord for that because it does not go on forever enjoy and appreciate the time that we have here and if we teach them the right way and they've got Jesus we'll spend eternity together they ain't no longer than eternity. That's a blessing that we all have an opportunity to have. We're going to have a time of invitation. If there's something you need to lay on the altar, we've got a few here this morning. You feel free to come. But if you're watching on the live stream, you can go to the altar right there in your house. And you can confess anything to the Lord. You can ask Him anything. You can seek direction or whatever right there, just like you can right here. So I ask you right now as we pray, just to get things right with the Lord. And if you do have things right with the Lord, pray for the person that He puts on your mind as we sing. Ocean 
service we will put out some information on the prayer chain and on our social media <clears throat> the best we get that out is the best we can but right now we know that next Sunday morning we will be having a nine o'clock service for if your last name starts with a through M and 11 o'clock service for those that are uh, N through Z so now and remember if it's if you just can't make the service you're supposed to be in it's okay to come to the other one, but we need to try our best to stay <clears throat> where we are so we can keep social distance and take care of the things. We plan on having everything um, sanitized between services, and we're going to do um, all the things that we know to do uh, just to take precautions. We believe that the Lord has had, had a hedge of protection around us. <clears throat> if we have anybody in our church that has had the virus I don't know it does anybody here know of that I don't know of anybody praise God praise God praise God but um, we we pray for that hedge of protection and we pray that um, that the Lord just keep protecting us as we worship and praise him uh, he he is the one is in control of all of that and uh, you know if you think you, uh, you 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 can get the disease right there in your home as well as you could here in the church. Um, as long as you're doing what the Lord wants you to do, following him, he is going to take care of you. 
but we're not going to just go crazy on it. We're going to do the things that will take care of um, keeping everything sanitary, sanitized. Is anybody here have an announcement? Praise God. Pray for this uh, praise team. They're, they're used to going Sunday morning, Sunday night. They're going to have to turn around one service and in and, and a couple of hours do another service. So, and and the preachers usually used to having a few hours in between too. But I, I'm not worried about that. If I if I happen to fall over, Adam's just going to step up and just keep trucking. But we'll be good. Praise the Lord. Let's end in prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Thank you, Lord, for a great day. Thank you for all the mothers, Lord. Thank you for the privilege we've had to come in and worship on this day and to praise you and to honor you and to glorify you. Thank you, Lord, for that. You've been so good to us. You've blessed us in so many ways, and we give you praise, honor, and glory. And I pray that you just have that hedge of protection around our church family. And as we leave here today, be with each one as they go to their homes. And, Father, I pray that you would stay in our hearts, that the word would not be stolen from us, and that we would grow closer to you and closer to each other. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.